Good morning. My name is Kyle Verge, and I am here with the Appalachian Center for Economic Networks, or ACENET. And today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Google Business Basics. Uh, precisely, we'll be talking about photos, how to add them, how to add your logo, and a little bit more. So I'm going to walk you through that today. All right, so a brief recap before we get started. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous webinars, you won't know that I started a fake business called Meow Meow Business, and I registered this with the with uh, Google. And then in my last webinar, we went through the info pane and we sort of updated some of the uh, services we want, some of the amenities we offer, if we take credit cards or not, things that are all found in the info pane. And uh, we can see that we started to generate some views. So I have nine views uh, from nine searches, and I'm not sure what 115 activity is. Maybe that's the number of clicks. But uh, so we've got some results. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the things that we've covered previously, you can email me at kyleV at acenetworks.org, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. But again, uh, today we'll be talking about the Photos tab. So if you, when you log in to uh, Google Business, you'll first start at the home page. Today we're just going to be moving to the Photos tab. Now you can see here that they're making some suggestions in the Overview pane. We want to pick a logo. We want to enter that in. We want a cover photo. We want a video and an interior. So these are the things that Google thinks are the most important for any business. And so for today, we're going to be uh, starting that process. Now you can see that there are several other tabs at the top. We're not going to cover all of them today. We're just going to cover the, the basic ones that Google finds most uh, important. But that'll be a great start. All right, so we're going to start with the very first one. It's called adding a logo. Uh, so it's at, Google is asking us, once we click on that logo, um, bar to upload a logo. Now unfortunately I just started this fake business, uh, Meow Meow Business, and so I don't have a logo yet. However, that's not a big problem. We can create one in five minutes that looks slightly presentable, something that'll work for us until we have time or uh, we have access to the people that can really design us a nice one. So what I'm going to suggest that we do, if you want to create your own logo, is go to a site called Canva. Now uh, you can get to it by just Googling Canva, and uh, it'll, it should come up first, of course. And what you'll see is a Logos button that we can press, and that should take us directly to the interface to get started. We can, of course, get there by going to just the Canva one, but this is exactly where you want to go. So if we did click on that uh, logo tab, it should take us to something that looks like this. And all we're going to do is click on this one in the center, or we could click on login. <clears throat> but either way you go, it's going to ask you to log in before you get started. Now the reason it's asking you to log in is because you'll have to download what you create in Canva, and uh, they're going to want your email address in exchange for that. Uh, it's probably for marketing, but uh, Whatever the reason they want it, uh, we're going to have to abide by that in order to use their programming. So we see we can sign up with Google, we can sign up with Facebook, or sign up with an email. I like to sign up with Google just because I already have a particular Google address associated with my business. And that way I'm not really confusing which login information I'm using for which site. I can just keep it all clean and organized. However, you can choose any way you want to pretty simple login process, but uh, you'll have to go through that before we can get into the logo maker. So this is what you should see uh, when you have logged in. You can see that uh, there are several templates for all sorts of logos that they offer for free. Now again, because I am uh, creating that fake business called Meow Meow Business, which is associated with cats, and I want to make sure that my logo actually reflects my business name so that people aren't confused, things like that. I went ahead and searched for the templates uh, concerning cats. So uh, you could see that several of them came up. 
uh, we see Meowie Incorporated, kind of close on mine, but I don't really like the circle. I do like, however, the silhouette of a cat. I think that uh, it sort of suggests that maybe there's some Meow Meow business happening. And uh, I know from using Canva that I can change just about everything in here. Now I could just change this to say Meow Meow Business and keep that pet boutique and then I could just click download and I'd be done. That's it. However, um, if you'd like to do a little bit more customizing, uh, you can. So I'm going to walk you through one way of customizing it and that's just picking your color palette. Uh, so what I usually do to begin with is ask Google for the hex code concerning my favorite color. So my favorite color is burnt orange. I know I probably should have been born in the 70s, but uh, it still is. And um, so what I did is I, I, I Googled that and then I am copying this hex code here. It always starts with a number sign and then has a couple of letters and numbers in it. And this just indicates, this is something that's used across the board in different, um, in different programs just so they can have a uniform idea of what color. Uh, is. So what you want to do is if you have a great color you like, maybe periwinkle, maybe, um, I don't know, some sort of uh, yellow or green or something like this, uh, you can just ask it for the right hex code and then copy that down. Now the reason that this is going to be important is because I'm going to take you to another site. This site is where it'll design your color palette for you based on a hex code. So if you have two favorite colors you want to appear, you can get both of them. And what you do is you just come down to this, it's called coolors.io. And when you go here, uh, this is all you'll see. And what you can do is you can enter into the hex code here at the bottom after clicking on one of these, and then just press lock. At that point, you can generate different color palettes based on uh, that one that you entered and locked and uh, so I just went with the very first one that it suggested so I have a rifle green, a dark blue, uh, slate blue, a honeydew, a gray uh, and I'm gonna go with that with my logo. So what I did is I used the interface at Canva to sort of change all of these things. Now I'm not going to be going through how to do that precisely. Um, one day I'll have a webinar associated with how to use Canva pretty effectively. But for right now, um, it's important to just play with this. Uh, you, should be, you, you will see that there are several ways to affect change in here. But you can see that I, pulled my, I put in my hex code for uh, my um, burnt orange here. Uh, here's my rifle gray. And here is another color that it suggested. Uh, so it doesn't look terrible. It's not blinding, uh, you know, it, it doesn't look great either, but the important idea is that it will suffice until we can get something a little more professional. All right. So finalizing. So what we've done, oh, whoops. So once it's done, you're going to have to download it. Uh, this will allow you to then enter it into that Google um, uh, logo box and so you'll just want to click download it'll download onto your computer and then from there go back to the slide we can enter it in and you can see that it's allowing us to rotate it left to right it's allowing us to crop it in and out if we think it's too big or too small um, and the really nice thing about this is that Google's only offering us like a specific size that we can use and Canva exports it into the correct size for Google and for other um, programs that might use an icon. So we know we don't have to fight with Google about the image size, about how many pixels it might contain or not contain because Canva did all that work for us. So you can see that I can add a caption down here. I can do a couple of different things, but I'm just going to leave it like this and then hit say set logo. So for the rest of the process, it, it's just going to be doing exactly the same thing. Uh, it's asking you in the next one for a, a to set a cover photo. Now this cover photo uh, should reflect your business in some significant way. So if you're doing a food business, you'll probably want to show some pictures of your best food. If uh, you're showing, if you have a auto business, maybe you'll, you know, either put a picture of some of your work up there or uh, 
just anything that's sort of going to allow your customers to immediately associate your business with that photo. So for me, that's going to be cats. Uh, so I have some pictures of my cat, uh, and I'm just going to drag that photo there, and that's going to serve as the main photo for me on my business because those two are pretty closely associated. So if you've gone through that process and found your cover photo, so you can see some cats here, uh, here's my logo, and then I did some interior shots, so you can see that this is a cat tree that she really likes, these blankets she's torn apart, yeah. here's a whole basket of cat toys that she never uses. So anyway, this is the interior of Meow Meow business. Uh, if you have a real and an actual business, you'll want to take some better shots here, uh, but the point is, is that you can upload all of these, it's pretty simple. Uh, this gray box that you see here is actually the video that I had uploaded. Pretty simple. It's just a video of my cat. You can go and check it out if you want to, um, but it's all up there. And then finally, uh, here is what it's called the 360 view. This is what Google did when uh, they were looking for my house on, uh, or were looking for my business rather, on uh, Google Business. They, this is like a, actually across the street from me, but you can see that this would allow your customers to uh, zoom in and rotate in this video so they can get a 360 degree view of where your business might be located so that they can feel a little more comfortable um, you know, going there, parking there, trying to figure out if there's accessibility, things like that. So one final thing I'd like to mention, if you mess up at any point uh, uploading the photos and you're not doing the right sort of thing that you wanted to, maybe you put it in the wrong sort of category, one thing you can do when you click on the um, image is you'll see a little icon in the corner right here, and if you click on that, it'll give you some details about it. So if I accidentally um, picked product instead of uh, interior shot, or if I picked exterior instead of interior, here's where you can go and recategorize them. That's sort of helpful um, if you ever run into trouble. But again, exterior photos of the building, uh, those will be pretty helpful for identifying your business, and maybe you have some neat art up there or something else you want to highlight, and that'll be really important. Thanks for watching the webinar. If you have any questions about making a logo, uh, about uploading your logo, about adding photos to your Google site, you can email me here, info at acenetworks.org or kylev at acenetworks.org. You can give me a call, you can find me on Facebook or even through our website. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you learned something.